Hello, and welcome to a new season of Campus Connections, Spring 2008. I'm J.B. Meyer. And I'm Jordan Taylor. On today's show, we will discuss how current budget cuts are affecting Cal State Long Beach students and also explore the benefits of working on campus. We will also take a look at some great ways to blow off steam at the Student Union. Also, we'll learn how to protect yourself outside of the classroom and a fun way of doing so. We'll look at how CSULB students are going global with help from the Center for International Education and speak with the director of the Multicultural Center. And for you sports fans out there, we'll check out the start of the Long Beach State Dirtbacks upcoming season. But first, tuition fees have increased over 80% in the past five years on Cal State and UC campuses. But now, students have taken matters into their own hands, proposing a measure to control tuition fees. Here is Ariana Castellanos with more on the issue. Tuition fees have changed drastically over the past five years and the CSU and UC systems increasing over 80%. Oh yeah, I definitely have experienced the tuition increases over time. But now students have taken matters into their own hands and hoping their efforts will alleviate the financial strain. The College Affordability Act of 2008 will freeze tuition fees for five years beginning in 2009. To make up for the funds, Anyone making more than $1 million annually will have to pay a 1% tax. I need it and they have it. You know, it doesn't, it's only 1%. An estimated $2 billion will be collected, 60% of which would go to the Cal State and UC systems to help lower student fees, improve campus security, and make textbooks more affordable. This first semester I spent about $600 and this semester I spent about $400. Tuition fees may be higher than they were a few years ago, but luck is still on our side. We do have very low student fees when you compare our fees to, to other uh, states. California schools have suffered a budget cut of more than $300 billion. And the state uh, has a deficit. That deficit has to be passed along uh, to all of those that uh, are receiving uh, general fund revenues, and we're included in that. But why is education the first on the chopping block? The UC campuses, along with the CSU campuses, are the only large discretionary item in the budget. And one of the cuts, obviously, uh, that's attractive is to cut the, the UC and the CSU system. The College Affordability Act sounds like the answer college students have been looking for. But not everyone's convinced this measure is the way to deal with the problem. We do want to provide uh, uh, sounder uh, funding for both the UC and the CSU system. You need to do it in a public policy way that makes uh, better sense than the one we have. Even some students are unsure. It sounds like a good idea. The only problem is, I don't know if down the line it might be a beneficiary for what we're doing. But struggling students are more concerned with whether they'll be able to afford any more fee increases. Any way we could help students here, that would be awesome. If volunteers do not get enough signatures by April, the College Affordability Act of 2008 will not make it to the ballot in November. From the Chancellor's Office in Long Beach, I'm Ariana Castellanos with Campus Connection. With school fees being so high these days, this proposal looks like it could benefit a lot of students. Not only would it benefit students, but organizations on campus as well. Here to speak with the Editor-in-Chief of the Daily 49er is Campus Connection's own Andrew Smith. Thanks, guys. Joining me today is the Editor-in-Chief of the Daily 49er, Bradley Zinn. Brad, thanks so much for coming in to speak to us today. Good to be here. Well, congratulations on the changes that you've made to the print version of the Daily 49er, Brad. It's looking fantastic. Can you tell our viewers exactly what the changes are? Well, uh, last semester there was a consensus that we needed to freshen up the print version. Um, we were using outdated software from about five or six years ago, which in computer terms is a long time. and so. Um, Allison Baldwin, the new design coordinator, with the help of Amar Aguilar, one of the journalism professors, they got together and instituted a fresh uh, redesign for the print version. And with the help of myself and the other staff members, uh, we kind of came to consensus of what we wanted, and I think the result was pretty good. So I understand you've also made some changes to the online edition as well. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what those changes are? Uh, about two years ago, we uh, went from using the Cal State Long Beach server, which used to host the website since 1994, to a um, a uh, Massachusetts-based company called College Publisher, which publishes, which provides uh, content management systems for many different newspapers throughout the country. So we went to College Publisher about two years ago, and just right now, uh, today and next week, hopefully we'll be able to um, release our revamped version of the website. 
So what's, what has the uh, community reaction to the changes uh, uh, to in the newspaper been? Uh, I think that the reactions to the print version have been uh, very positive so far. We got an email from uh, President Alexander himself congratulating us on the changes that we instituted. Uh, I think that the paper definitely looks a lot better than what it used to do. It's much more freshened up. We can do more visual things with it. And I've also heard that even some design professors told Allison, the design coordinator, that, um, that it looked good. As editor-in-chief, what do you believe has been the best moment for the paper over the past two semesters? Well, I think one of the things that I liked the most was um, after the fall semester was over, we were looking for more people for the spring, and we got a whole bunch of applications. And I was just proud to know that many people wanted to be a part of the paper. They wanted to help contribute in any way they could, and they wanted to, you know, um, be a part of that the Long Beach State legacy that the 49ers been since the school opened. So I was proud to see that many people wanted to join. And this semester, we have the largest editorial staff we've ever had. I think it's up to 28 or 29 people, many of whom work every day. So how important do you think it is for CSULB journalism majors to become involved in the paper? I think it's, it's more than essential. Um, a journalism degree is one thing, but internship experience and hands-on um, getting your hands dirty, talking to sources, actually working in the field and doing things is, is quite another. And any internship that you apply for, you need that. You need that. I can tell you firsthand that every internship I've applied for, they looked not at my journalism grades or even the fact that I, had a, that I will have a journalism degree, but at my experience, what, what I've done for the 49 and other publications. So, so I recommend that for all students if they're really serious about getting into the field. Well, Rad, thanks again for coming in to speak to us today. Thank you. And when we return, we'll learn about the various ways students can earn a living working on campus. This and more after these messages. For some folks, saving for the future is easy. But for you, it might take a little more effort. Saving for your future is your responsibility. And there's a lot to save for. I never thought of that. Like your child's education. Perhaps uncovered medical expenses. Or just to be sure you can live the way you want when you retire. The time is now to save for tomorrow. Save now or work forever. The choice is yours. Choose to save. Welcome back to Campus Connection. Now we all know how hard it is to make money and still maintain good grades. But you're in luck because Cal State Long Beach offers a wide variety of resources and opportunities for students to find internships and jobs right here on campus. Here is Ashley LaFerrier with more. Having a job while going to college can often prove to be difficult because of class schedules and leaving campus can be inconvenient. Cal State Long Beach offers many employment options for students to help fulfill their job needs while connecting the educational experience with the work world. There are so many opportunities here on campus, it just depends, and the good thing about it is there's an opportunity for every major because every department is always looking for students. Students who choose to work on campus are finding jobs as student aides and assistants, campus escorts, coffee shop baristas, cashiers, and more. Really working on campus is great. You know, you'll see people from your classes just coming in and out, and you know, it's really great with networking and it's a lot of fun. Having a job at CSULB gives students more time on campus to connect with other students and gives them plenty of on-the-job experience. There are countless other benefits to staying and working here on campus. You don't have to worry about traffic or whether being stuck in traffic or being late to work or right after class you can get to go straight to work and not be late. Working on campus is convenient for many students because they can work between their classes and have flexible schedules. Students also work on campus because they're a part of the campus community. I think the other advantage is that they're in an environment, a learning environment, so where they can actually take what they're learning in the classroom and apply it at work and vice versa. Students can also receive career counseling and search in the resource library for on and off campus jobs and internships. There are also plenty of workshops and career fairs to help students find jobs while in school and after graduation. With resources like the Career Development Center, 49er Shops, and BeachLink, more and more students are working on campus. They're finding jobs that are not only convenient, but they're getting experience and networking that will take them beyond their years here at the beach. For Campus Connection, I'm Ashley LaFerrier. Not only is Cal State Long Beach a place to work, it's also a place for play. That's right. The University Student Union at Cal State Long Beach is the most utilized facility on campus and is a place for students to relax and regroup between classes. Here with more on this story is Carly Youngren. 
Cal State Long Beach is a large commuter school. There are many aspects of the campus that are not used very often. The University Student Union offers a wide variety of events and activities to suit every student's personality. On the first floor is the Gaming Center, where you can unwind in front of the television, bowl with friends, practice the piano, or shoot pool. Well, I have free time when I'm not in class. Just come here, all my friends are here, shoot pool, one hour, two hour, sometimes three. One level up, there are plenty of places to grab a bite to eat before class or meet with classmates to work on a project. Students are able to get involved, even if they don't have a lot of time to spare. Our students are so busy, they're working, they have families, and so whatever involvement they have, it's very limited. In the courtyard, there is a electric hair salon where students can get a quality haircut on the price of a struggling student budget. On the third floor of the union, there is the Associated Students Incorporated offices. Events are planned to encourage beach pride. ASI tries to use different marketing techniques to get the word out about what's happening each month. We've actually had to switch to a multimedia marketing um, scheme for almost every program with students. Now, nowadays, the way you receive information is so different. Some students look at posters and flyers and brochures. Um, others look at you know plasma screens, the electronic marquee. Um, we're trying to break into podcasting so we can get into iPods and try to get out there further um, into where you really are. Student life and development provides students with tips on balancing and strengthening their college experience three key components for student involvement and statistics of research has consistently shown this and that is if you're involved you do better academically you have a better experience you're more satisfied and you're more likely to graduate and what's what's great about this is that success is on all types of students the university believes that being involved provides students with life skills you need outside the classroom Next time you're walking through the Student Union, make sure to stop and take a look around. You're sure to find something that will attract your attention. This is Carly Youngren reporting for Campus Connection. Violence in schools these days seems to be on everybody's mind. Since the recent shooting at Northern Illinois University, Cal State Long Beach has been on alert about safety issues. Campus Connection's Rashawn Rankins has more on the story. President Alexander sent a campus-wide email addressing safety concerns inside and outside the classroom, and he introduced a new website, emergency.csuob.edu, which provides information for when an emergency happens on campus. Some professors think it's important for students to take campus safety seriously. They don't understand how unaware they are, and in this day and age with all of, you know, sort of your generation, you have all the iPods and the cell phones, and people get preoccupied with those kind of things, and they don't look around, and they leave themselves open and vulnerable to get attacked. Recent university police statistics show that in 2006, four sexual assaults occurred on campus, while two happened at campus housing. Students take their own precautions to avoid dangerous situations. I have pepper spray, I walk with friends a lot. I used to talk all the time um, outside by the dorms at night and now I just stay in the hallway, I don't go outside anymore. The kinesiology department offers self-defense classes every semester. The instructor emphasizes the benefits of taking the class. All of us are unbelievably strong. If you give them little pieces and pieces and then they can just get way up here. You know, we have no idea how strong we really can become. And the physical in here helps us get to that realization with the mental. Students kick, punch, and yell their way through several intense exercises. The exercises teach students discipline and control and give them a sense of peace through meditation. Progressing the class proves to be a rewarding experience. I learned, I learned a lot of things so far. Um, just to be more aware um, and how to defend myself, I feel a little bit more safer, I feel more confident. This class offered uh, flexibility training, uh, defense training, I'm a senior in my 70s, and also offered uh, meditation, all those things I need at this time in my life. I think that, that everyone should be physically able to defend themselves, or at least to have them. No pun intended of fighting chances of themselves. Being aware is crucial. Campus police say students should not walk alone in secluded areas. Students should have a buddy system. Taking the shuttle and using the police escort service also helps your chances of safety. Emergency phones such as this one connect you to campus police in an emergency. Surveillance cameras secure us as well, 
but the key to campus safety is prevention. And prevention begins when you know how to protect yourself. This is Rashawn Rankins reporting for Campus Connection. Isn't it great to know that Cal State Long Beach offers ways for students to defend themselves? Absolutely. And the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Club at Long Beach State can provide martial arts training and high-level competition within a fun environment. Here's John Pasquale with more. The Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Club at Cal State Long Beach is a sports club that offers Jiu-Jitsu instruction headed by an expert who trained under the Machados, a family world-renowned for their mastery of Jiu-Jitsu. I trained with the Machados for um, six years. I started with them in 95 and then I went to South Bay Jiu-Jitsu. In existence for over seven years, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Club is a product of hard work and an idea on a whim. I had a friend of mine who also trained Jiu-Jitsu and he, we were just talking about, he's like, oh, we should start a club up, you know, and you know, we could just have it on campus and all that. And uh, so I looked into it and I did all the work and I went and petitioned for it and all this. And in about 2001, we actually got officially recognized. One of the ideals behind the creation of this club was to establish a place for not only students, but anyone interested in jujitsu to unite. Uh, Eddie Martinez and I actually started the club uh, to have a place where we could actually train together, train new students and try to bring people who are interested in Brazilian jiu-jitsu together. As time progressed, more and more people began showing up to practices. I've had famous people come here. I had a uh, UFC fighter, Brandon Vera. New members have found reason enough to continue attending. I learned something last week. I'm definitely interested in learning more. And on the topic of learning, here's what one of the club's members had to say. As a girl, you can still beat up guys. At a glance, this club may appear to be a group of people brawling. However, much like other clubs, the BJJ club is organized and operated under an executive board. We have five officers, um, one of the tournament coordinator, uh, vice president, president, and then uh, secretary and um, treasurer. But arguably, the best feature that the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu club here at Cal State Long Beach has to offer is its unbeatable price. We offer three times a week here for $80 a semester. So. The club's prices are so cheap, it prompts co-founder Brian Carr to issue this proposition. I challenge anyone to try and beat the price on it and the quality of instruction. And while the competition level is high, the level of camaraderie is even higher. We treat everybody really with respect here. For those who are coy but interested in joining the club, Eddie Martinez has this to say. I have an open door policy. I just let people come in you know, and, and try it out. You know. For those who wish to take advantage of this offer, the club meets three days a week in the Physical Education Building. This is John Pasquale for Campus Connection. Ever wonder what it's like to cram for a test with Eiffel Tower just outside your window? The Center for International Education at Long Beach State runs programs that prepare American students for a global environment and attracts foreign students to study, learn, and exchange experiences in the U.S. Here is Aini Gu with more on the story. International skills and global knowledge will be critical as Cal State University graduates under the workforce of the 21st century. The primary focus for the Center of International Education is to increase knowledge and awareness of the world's cultures among students and the wider community. At CIE, we like to say that, that um, we're not only concerned about your success, but we're, we're concerned that you are significant. You know, I think when someone studies abroad or if they're an international student coming to the U.S. and interacting with U.S. students, that, that is how the world can be changed. That is how students can become significant in the world, which is a little bit beyond being successful. Through the Center for International Education, approximately 1,500 international students from more than 100 foreign countries are enrolled each academic year. In addition, some 300 CSULB students take advantage of both short-term and year-long study abroad opportunities around the world. However, without a professional help, constantly having to deal with stress, fear, and confusion can be frustrating or even stressful for the students who study abroad. Studies have shown that when students are involved in their campus, connected to different organizations and involved in different activities, they tend to do better. So they'll have, they'll have a more emotional commitment to the campus, and if they generally have a more emotional commitment, you know, they also translate into their schoolwork. The International Student Services, or ISS unit of the CIE office, provides specialized services and assistance to CSULB international students, such as immigration status, school policies and procedures, housing assistance, and other issues. 
as an international student, I think that international student office is important because, um, first of all, the status of our visa is really important, and um, they provide all the application and forms, which help us to keep track of our visas, renew our I-20s, and they also provide all the answer for all the questions for international student. A CIE to Education and Study Abroad program offers CSULB students many opportunities to intern, study, teach, volunteer, and work abroad while making progress toward their academic degree. Programs include semester and year-long options as well as short-term, summer, and winter session opportunities. The study abroad office has been helping me out since freshman year. I, the first day of freshman year, I came to the study abroad office and I said, I want to study abroad <laughs> in my third year. And so um, right away, they were just really helpful. They set me up with workshops. And I had like every single pamphlet you could think of. I had finan financing. They gave me, uh, they have a scholarship binder in there. They, they know everything about every country. The Center of International Education offers students to international programs, which is affiliated with over 50 universities and other institutions of higher education in 19 countries. Established in 1963, the program is currently in its 44th year of operation, and more than 15,000 students have participated. Reporting for Campus Connection, this is Aini Gu. What better way to prepare for the real world than experiencing it yourself? Not only do you gain real-world experience, but cultural awareness as well. Here to speak with the director of the Multicultural Center is Campus Connection reporter Christina Poncher. Joining me today is Dr. James Manso Salceda. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for being here. My pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly is the Multicultural Center. The Multicultural Center is an educational resource for the whole campus, students, faculty, and staff. It supports all kinds of efforts, anything to bring constituents together across language, across religion, across ethnicity. So it's a safe place to make contact, to make connection. And um, with you being the founding director of the center, uh, why do you think it's important to have a center like this on campus that really celebrates diversity? Well, to celebrate diversity, you have to understand the difference of culture and, and not be afraid to face that there are tensions and difficult issues we have to face. It's crucial that a campus has such a place so the conversation can be real, can be authentic, and as things change, we have open conversation and dialogue that allows us to truly make a connection then you can celebrate once you've made that connection. So we need it. And um, what kind of resources does the center offer to students, faculty, and staff? It's, a, it's probably more than you'd imagine in, in that we have everything from CD-ROMs on specialty issues like digital hate. We've got a lot of films. Students can check out our films and take them home, unlike the main library, all our right. elements. So periodical literature, things under categories of culture, identity, uh, so it, it crisscrosses a lot of issues, and uh, every student can just walk in and, and check out whatever they'd like. And um, what other things, other than resources, does the center have to offer? Like what groups will come in and utilize the center or what have you? Yeah, well, it, we get a great cross traffic because it is students, faculty, and staff, and students don't realize they may be working on an event that brings students, other students together. You can use the, the conference room of the Multicultural Center. So we get, we get departments, we get student clubs and orgs, we get uh, individuals who are just trying to put together an idea. So I would say it's got a real broad outreach. And speaking of the broad outreach, um, what are some of the things that instructors have come in, um, brought into their classrooms and really yeah. been able to grab a hold of what the center has to offer? I think a lot of the films that we use, in fact, we'll, they will tell us something they've seen maybe at a conference and we'll do our best to secure it. And so I would say a lot of faculty have found that some of the, uh, the films we have have these really intriguing discussions and they can use them uh, in their classroom, pre-cue them up to, to certain sections, but it opens a dialogue in their rooms. And um, what are some of the upcoming events that the Multicultural Center is hosting? Well, coming up soon, March 18th and 19th, I've been working with the Associated Students for a walk a day in my culture. And it's a kind of cultural event for two days. It's going to have conversation and discourse and allow student voices to speak. And the next night, is, it's celebrating Latino culture, but to show the diversity within the term Latino. 
So it's not just for Latinos, it's for the whole campus, and it's to surprise you on the range and outreach that that cultural label actually includes. That sounds so exciting. It's well, gonna be good. thank you very much for your time here today. You're welcome. All right, when we get back, we'll bring you the first plans at the start of the Dirt Bag's promising new season. Stay tuned. For me, it's giving the best of myself. For me, it's the professional team environment and the mutual respect that I share with my colleagues. For me, it's providing my patients with the best and safest care possible. For me, it's having the latest in health care technologies and the privilege of providing the best health care to America's veterans. We are the nurses of VA. VACareers.com, a career in caring. Hello, and thanks for staying with us. The smell of hot dogs, the crack of the bat, and the seventh inning stretch could only mean one thing. It's baseball season. And if you're a Long Beach State fan, be ready for an exciting one. Here with a look at the Long Beach State Dirt Bags is our very own sports guru, Bo Fertig. The Dirt Bags were ranked number 17 in preseason polls and picked to win a tough Big West Conference, according to Collegiate Baseball. And Coach Weathers believes his team has what it takes to accomplish this goal. Well, we have all the ingredients to win. I think this team is as experienced as we've had here in my seven years. We got a lot of innings back on our pitching staff. We got a lot of at-bats and experience in a regional last year from our position players. Long Beach State has a talented and experienced roster, but their unofficial name, the Dirtbags, comes from the program's style of play and success against high football teams. We like playing the rivalries. I like uh, the Rice and Wichita State. The Dirtbags swept their three-game series against number nine Wichita State last weekend and took two of three from top-ranked Rice. But the goal for any elite program is not only to beat the best, but to reach the coveted College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. And one person on the team knows a little something of what it takes to reach the series, doing it both in 93 and 98 as player and coach. Those teams I played on and coached on, it came down to the last guy on the bench to get big hits. So uh, you know that's what we're looking for. The great thing about this program is it utilizes a lot of players. And uh, when you're not expecting it, you're going to be called on to do something special. And we try to prepare them for that. Still looking for their first World Series championship, the Dirtbags will look to ride the arm of returning pitcher Andrew Liebel, who has already carried the team to a 1-0 shutout victory with 11 strikeouts against Rice. A lot of ranked teams come in here, uh, you're playing against the best, and uh, to give my team the best, uh, the best effort I got to uh, win a ball game, um, it's one of the better feelings of playing this game. Junior shortstop and preseason All-American Danny Espinosa has also made an immediate impact by helping the Dirtbacks to their first win of the season with a game-winning hit. It feels good uh, to be able to help the team out. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun being able to come through class situations when I get the opportunity to. Uh, it feels good just to help the team win. It's a team effort, however, to win ball games. And does this team have what it takes? This team's got a lot of fight in them. I mean, this team wants to win. We know we're good, but this team's not complacent at the same time. They're always trying to get better as individuals to help the team out. Thus far, the Dirtbag's three opponents have all been ranked nationally in the top ten. So come out to Blair Field and root on your Long Beach State Dirtbags as they face off against the premier teams in the nation. For Campus Connection, this is Bo Furtick. Thanks, Bo. We wish Coach Weathers and his team a successful season. That's all for today's edition of Campus Connection. As always, we thank you for joining us. With that, I'm J.B. Meyer. And I'm Jordan Taylor. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the beach. beach.